Ladies and gentlemen, the Nintendo Switch is one of the most successful and polarizing and just one of the best consoles of all time. And I truly can't believe how massive the Switch became. With massive success also comes with massive failures and today we're going to be pinpointing just that. So let's just go ahead and get right into this video. I have to be the bad guy today. Today I am the bearer of the bad news that there is some failures on the Switch. But I just love this console that much that I want them to improve on this for the next console. So in today's video we'll be going over the biggest failures of the Nintendo Switch. I won't be going over any of my personal preferences like things I wish they would have done. So I'm not going to be talking about themes or anything like that. These are actual, factual failures. Before we get started, if you could hit a like and subscribe, it would truly really mean the world to me. And let's just go to get right into this video. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Mario Home Circuit. Like why the hell was this even created? The first time I seen this, I thought it was like one of those random April Fool's jokes that happens when people create like random fake products for companies. I was like, what the hell? A Mario Kart toy that cost $100 that you can play with in your house? Are we really doing this? I feel like this never should have happened. I feel like this thing was not a success at all. I actually still see these on sale randomly at like Walmart and Best Buy sometimes for 50 bucks because I don't think anybody really bought these. The people who did buy them, I'm sure are kicking themselves in the butt for even buying this. Like was it fun for that 15 minutes? Was it really worth it? Look at this question I found to somebody online asking if they should buy this and people were just like, no, don't do that. It turns out the company who created this is called VLAN Studios and they've only made two other things. Do you think those things were successful? Well, do you guys remember Knockout City? Yeah, I barely remembered as well. They've created that, they've created Mario Kart Home Circuit. It turns out they created the same exact thing for Hot Wheels. So instead of using a Switch, you just use an iPad or something. And I didn't even know that was a thing, so I doubt that was successful. And I'm not sure if I would even call them really a game studio. I guess I would since they've created one game, but they are laying off like tons and tons of employees. So if I had to guess, I would say Mario Kart Home Circuit was a massive failure. Nintendo VR. Where is it? Does it even exist? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you can tell me. I got my Switch in 2018. And when I got my Switch, it was like the tail end of Nintendo Labo stuff. And basically what this was is like this kind of cardboard stuff where you could make these little toys and gadgets. And that is how we had VR. We gotta call a spade a spade here. That was a massive failure. I see the vision. Like I see where it could have went, but I think it's too little too late. I think this would have been cool maybe in like 2010 or something when we are still hooked on gimmicks like the Wii and stuff like that. But I truly wonder how much resources went into Nintendo Labo. I'm not saying it was a bad idea. Any which way you look at it, it was a massive failure. And yeah, there's not much else to say about Nintendo Labo. So right now I am chatting with my viewers. And what am I using to chat with you? Well, I'm using my voice. Voice? Chat? put them together we have voice chat nintendo has no idea what that is not having voice chat is something i can't even conceptualize how did that ever come up in a meeting you know these gamers who play online and make friends and talk to their family and keep in contact and play amazing games together with you know how they use this thing called a headset and they chat online what if we made that the hardest thing in the world possibly to do like what if we made it basically non-existent you know what I think you've got something here. I know it sounds like I'm joking, but what other conversation could they possibly have had to make this the reality of voice chat? You may say, well, Mr. Robot Joe, don't you know about the Nintendo app where you can kind of use voice chat? Guess what, guys? Nintendo doesn't care about that either. You had to have a Nintendo online membership to use this? That's stupid. Okay, I get it. It's a business. And two, do you think Nintendo cared about this? Because if they did, they would surely keep it updated, right? So I decided to look up the Nintendo Online app. And if you look in the description of the games that you can use this for, they still have Splatoon 2. I don't know if you know or not, but there is a game called Splatoon 3 that came out. So Nintendo was like, you know what? It is what it is. We're not even gonna update this shit anymore. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the definition of a massive failure. So one of my favorite things, I guess since the beginning, has been sports games. Mario sports games in particular, like Mario Baseball, Mario Strikers on the GameCube, Mario Golf on Nintendo 64. I truly love Mario sports games. Well, at least I did until the Nintendo Switch. Mario sports games on the Nintendo Switch are strictly cash grabs. I'm not saying they are technically bad games, but they're games that shouldn't exist. They're playable, and right when you feel like you might be having fun, well, there's nothing else to do. Imagine 
if this generation was your first time ever playing Mario sports games, you were probably like, what the hell is this? You gotta remember, there's millions of new gamers who just got a Switch, and this was their introduction into Mario sports games. Take every single Mario sports game on the Switch, and it's labeled, in my opinion, a massive failure. I'm not saying commercially they did bad. I'm sure they sold because people will buy anything, but it really does suck at how far that we've went downhill in the quality of Mario sports games. I've mentioned it a couple of times on this channel, but what I think they should actually do is put all the Mario sports games in one package and then release it once per generation. I think that's the best answer at this point because you release one every single year, they all kind of suck. And it's like, man, am I really going to spend like three or $400 per generation on these shitty games? I hope not. And that's why they are on this list. The Nintendo eShop. Do I really need to say more? The Nintendo eShop is one of the shittiest experiences I've ever had in my life. It is one of the worst qualities about the Switch. And what is really going on over there? Ladies and gentlemen, how many games do you think are on the eShop? 2,000? Maybe even 3,000? I mean, games are dropping every day. Probably even 4,000? But what if I told you there was 13,000 games on the Nintendo eShop? Yeah, now you see the issue. We really have about 10,000 games too many on the eShop. And I think having that many games is partly the reason why it runs like shit. Like I heard it's technically not an app, but it's a website that you're visiting or something like that. I mean, really, what else do I need to say about it? It looks horrible. It's awful to use. There's too many games. There's no music. This generation on the Switch, it's definitely one of the worst parts about the whole experience. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys seem smart, right? Like, I'm sure there's a couple stragglers that are mixed in here with my viewers who could be labeled dumbasses, but for the most part, you guys seem to have it together. So I have a question for you. What's wrong with this picture right here? Can you figure it out? We have a Joy-Con. We have a Switch. And we don't have another Joy-Con. That's right, another Joy-Con has stopped working. Joy-Con quality and Joy-Con drift is the single worst aspect about the Nintendo Switch. It's something that shouldn't even be a reality. In the modern era of gaming, Nintendo knows how to make high quality products, and yet it was a massive, massive failure. I don't think it's as bad as it once was, so I will give credit where it's due. I feel like maybe the newer generation of Joy-Cons aren't as bad. For the next Nintendo console, I hope that is the first thing that they went and fixed. The way the Joy-Con slide on and off, I don't like that. I know that's where you get the Joy-Con sound effect and the Nintendo Switch sound effect from, but I don't like it. So hopefully they'll fix that. Hopefully Drift will not even be a reality. And yeah, the whole Joy-Con quality was a massive failure. And the last thing I want to talk about technically isn't a failure but it is kind of a personal preference. And I know I said I wouldn't mention personal preferences, but I'm a hypocrite. What can I say? I wish we would have had a stylus because I think that would have worked great for the Switch. And I think we could have got some really cool games implemented because of the stylus. Like you guys know that Kirby game where you like draw the level, that would have been really fun. And I feel like with where game development and current technology is, we could have just had some really cool stuff. So I feel like that was a huge missed opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Was the Switch all butterflies for you? Or could you see some of the failures yourself? Down below, let me know what you think the biggest failure of the Nintendo Switch is. I'd seriously love to hear from you guys. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you could. I'd really appreciate a follow. And you guys know me. I'll see you soon with a new video. Peace out.